Here's your buyer's guide for what SSD you want to be putting into your PlayStation 5. Now, Sony has a bunch of specifications that indicate what SSD you should be putting into your new console, but we're here to break it down for you in the easiest way possible. And linked in the video description is a spreadsheet with all of the compatible SSDs that you could potentially purchase at this moment. They all have Amazon affiliate links, so it helps to support our channel, but I put it in one easy location for you so that in case you don't want to sit through this video, you don't have to. Today's UFD Tech video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Sleep is incredibly important to me for a multi-factor of reasons. Number one, I don't get enough of it just because of my lifestyle and the fact that my son wakes up at multiple times a night. So getting the most optimized sleep is always incredibly important to me. And I've been loving my sleep ever since Helix Sleep sent over their Dusk Lux mattress to me when I moved to PA. It was literally the first thing that I opened when I moved to my new house, and it was the first bed that I slept on when I moved here, and I can tell you that it has been a game changer, not only for me, but for my wife's quality of sleep as well. And Helix is a premium mattress in a box company that makes mattresses to fit your unique needs and preferences based on your body type and sleep style. Everybody's different, and Helix knows that, so they made a sleep quiz that matches your unique body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Based on different sleep positions and firmness preferences, they have something for everyone's unique taste. And if you're sleeping with a partner, you can take the sleep quiz together and find something that's the perfect compromise for the both of you, which is how my wife and I came to pick out the Dusk Lux mattress. I'm a side sleeper, she's a stomach sleeper, and the Dusk Lux was a great compromise for the both of us. It's not too hard, it's not too soft, we're both getting the best sleep of our lives, and it makes sure that when and my son is giving us those 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. wake up calls that I'm ready to go, take care of him, go back to sleep, and then wake up later at like a normal time in order to start my day. And the best part about all of this is that Helix delivers your mattress right to your door for free, just like they did for me. It just comes rolled up in a box and it's super easy to set up yourself. Unless it's a king size mattress and you have to carry it up a flight of stairs and you just drove 18 hours from Florida to Pennsylvania in order to get it all set up, in which case you might need your dad's help in order to, you know, carry it up the stairs. But other than that, like besides the weight of the mattress, it's super simple to set up. And if it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried, Helix has a 100 night sleep trial so you get more than three months to make sure that you love it. And if you don't love it, they'll pick it up for you and you'll get a free refund. I love my Helix mattress and I think you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. You can click the link below or go to helixsleep.com forward slash UFD tech and get up to $200 off a Helix mattress. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's UFD tech episode. And big thanks to them, honestly, for being a major part of my life every single day. That's the, like the reason I'm able to actually come to work and be rested is because of Helix Sleep. Big thanks to them. So of the specifications that Sony gives you, number one, it has to have PCI Express 4.0, which eliminates a lot of M.2 drives that are out there on the market. Number two, the speed requirement of that PCI Express 4.0 drive needs to be at least 5,500 megabytes per second, which eliminates a lot of the PCI Express 4.0 drives that are out there. Now, thankfully, once you get past those specifications, Sony opens it up a bit. It can be in various different sizes. It can be down to 2230, or it can be all the way up to 22110, which is just the length of the actual SSD. The vast majority of consumers consumer SSDs are going to be in the 2280 variety. You also do have to worry about length, width, and height on that SSD just a little bit more. Also, there are some specifications when it comes to heat sinks on the SSD. Below the SSD, you only have room for 2.45 millimeters, and above the SSD, you only have room for 8 millimeters. So Sony recommends that you put a heat sink onto your M.2 SSD. However, I did a video testing this out over on UFD Tech and found that adding a heat sink actually didn't affect the performance of my Sabrent Rocket or plus at all. This is not necessarily endorsing saying that you shouldn't put a heat sink on there. However, I didn't see any performance difference between having one and not having one. It didn't affect loading times like loading into the game, loading into the menu. It just gave us a slight difference from copying from the internal storage to the SSD. And it was a difference of like five seconds out of two minutes of total transfer time. But in case you are thinking about getting a heat sink, you do have to fit into Sony specifications. I tried to put on this Rocket NVMe heat sink, which was too thick, and it made it so that I couldn't even fully put on the side panel of my PlayStation 5. However, if you have the disc edition, it might be slightly different because there might be a little bit more wiggle room in there. However, try to stick within Sony specifications, which is going to be below that eight millimeter threshold. So out of all of those specifications, what SSDs can you actually buy? Well, I've come up with a list of several different options depending on what capacity SSD you want. You can go all the way down to 250 gigabytes or all the way up to four terabytes. Sony doesn't support more than four terabytes at the current moment. The capacity with the most options and choices 
is going to be that one terabyte. For the 250 gigabyte region, you're only getting the Samsung 980 Pro because everybody else assumes you're gonna at least want 500 gigs. In four terabytes, there are three different options. You've got the PNY Exhilarate, the Sprint Rocket 4 Plus, and what should be released on the 30th of August, not as of the time of recording, is the Seagate Fire Cuda 530. But depending on which SSD you're looking to pick up, all of these have the rated speed that you should be looking for, and I've also indicated whether or not they have a heat sink in case you want to pick one up. Some of them do have heat sinks that happen to be too tall, such as the XPG Gamix S70. It has the rated speed, only comes in at $160 for one terabyte, but the heat sink on that SSD might be a little too thick, so you might have to take it off and put on your own heat sink, which I also have linked in that spreadsheet or some heat sinks that you could potentially put on. Now, pricing wise, you're actually looking roughly the same. The minimum price for one terabyte is going to be about $160 for the PNY Exhilarate or that XPG Gamex, as I mentioned. The highest price that's out there right now is the Western Digital Black SN850 with a heat sink, but I think that's because Amazon's pricing is a little off right now. The Seagate Fire Cuda, which is one of the most hotly anticipated PCI Express 4.0 drives that's out there, is expected to be at the price point of $240, which is quite pricey. Personally, out of the drives that I've tested, the Sprint Rocket 4 Plus and the Samsung 980 Pro, they both come in priced pretty decently. The Sprint Rocket 4 Plus comes in priced at $180, whereas the 980 Pro comes in at $190. I've seen a lot of PS5 SSD buyers guides that are out there that are recommending things like the Seagate Fire Cuda, but number one, that isn't released as of yet. So when it does come out, it probably will be a good choice. However, it does appear to be on the more expensive side of things. The Samsung 980 Pro is a solid choice. It's one of the original PCI Express 4.0 drives that could hit the rated speeds that Sony wanted. And its pricing seems to be middle of the road for whatever capacity that you're looking for. You get it $130 for 500 gigabytes and $370 for two terabytes. Now, when you're looking at the rated speed of these SSDs, I wouldn't necessarily concern myself with that too much because again, you're comparing it to the internal storage of the PlayStation 5, which is where Sony's base specification is. So anything that's above that 5,500 megabytes per second is going to give you the same functional experience on the PlayStation 5. It's not like it is on a PC where you're copying files back and forth and you might need that updated speed. You're likely going to be fine if you go with any of the SSDs that are currently in the list. And honestly, the choice comes down to pricing, brand loyalty, and your preference of what SSD you want and whether or not you want to choose a heatsink. The cheapest SSD that comes with the heatsink that can actually fit into the drive is the Aorus 7000S, which is just around $200 for that one terabyte capacity. The WD Black SN850 tends to be a very popular drive. However, I think it's so popular that it's selling out very quickly, which causes its price on Amazon to go up. You can get it for $215 right now, or in case you want the special Black Ops Cold War edition, you can get that for $240. And as I mentioned earlier, the price with the heatsink, which actually does fit Sony specifications, is sitting right around $300 right now. So as more SSDs come out that could potentially be slotted into the PS5, I'll make sure to update the list as it goes on. So the information that I've presented in this video might change, but that link in the video description will be relevant as things progress. Let me know if you've got into Sony's PS5 beta software. Have you added in a SSD yourself? I want to hear from you down below in the comments. Now that that's over, why don't you go check out the video I did on UFD Tech, where I actually put in a whole bunch of different SSDs, testing them out, including this RGB SSD that's right here. And I'll see you in the next Brainus video, my friends. Cheers.